On this Transducer University, we're going to talk about chirp frequencies and beam widths. At Airmar, we think about our transducers just like another piece of fishing equipment. You want to match that piece of fishing equipment to what you're doing that day and you're going to be more successful. Our chirp transducers, we make them in high, medium, and low frequency bandwidths. And each one of those is going to be a different performance that you're going to get on the fish finder screen you have on your boat. So, for example, high, medium, and low will each give you different depth capabilities. They'll perform differently at different depths. They'll give you different resolutions of targets on your fish finder screen, so that's important. And they'll also give you different beam widths or coverage area under your boat, and that's certainly important. We're going to talk about all of that today. Before we get into the details, I'll paint you a little analogy for how frequencies work. Let's say it's a warm evening and you're at a stoplight with your windows down and the car next to you has their stereo up high and you can hear all of their music, all the details of the high cymbals and the mid ranges and the lows and it sounds great because you get all three of those. But when that light goes green and the car pulls away, the first thing that you lose for sound are those high symbols and all of that detail. The car proceeds a little further, that mid-range tends to disappear. And all you're left with as that car pulls away is the thump of the bass. That same analogy holds true for the frequencies in your transducer. The lower range will travel further through the water, the higher range will give you more detail, but not as far into the water. Keep that in mind as you're thinking about frequencies in your transducer. All right, so with that in mind, high frequency transducers, that 130 to 210 uh, frequency band is really, really good for high definition. It'll give you the most definition, the best resolution on your fish finder in depths that are shallow. Now what's shallow, right? Shallow can be two feet of water, but shallow can also be a thousand feet. So in our case at Airmar, our high frequency transducers are good out to a thousand feet. They will also do really, really well in the 150 to 250 range where you're going to get really good resolution of fish that are holding tight to structure. So if you're a jig fisherman and you're looking for species that are in wrecks or reefs or rocks, the high frequency is going to do a better job for you. The medium frequencies, that 85 to 135 band of frequencies that we put in our transducers, that's going to be a great all-around um, performer. That's going to give you good bottom definition and it's going to give you more depth capabilities than the high frequencies did. So now you're going to have capability of seeing bottom and seeing fish out as deep as 1500 feet. And that is a great frequency band to be using when you're fishing out in that 600, 700 foot. You want good definition of the bottom and you want to see species separated from the bottom. So low frequency, just as the analogy in the car, will just by nature travel deeper into the water column. So now you have 2,500 feet of capability in our low frequencies, um, but because of that frequency is spreading that energy out over a larger area, and I'll get into beam width in a minute, um, you're not going to get as much definition of the bottom, um, but you're still going to see fish. So in each one of those frequency bands, high, medium, and low, you can see in the graphic, there's actual differences in the space between the frequency or energy waves that are leaving and returning back to that transducer. By principle, the fish that appears on your fish finder and gets detected by that frequency wave has to be larger than the space between those waves. So on the high frequency, it can see smaller fish. There's less space between the high frequency waves. Something like the low does a really good job on larger fish. Their air bladder is larger and it picks up on that really, really well but the low might not show individual bait fish. The high will, and the medium is a good compromise. So if you match 
what you're fishing and how you're doing your fishing to those frequencies, capabilities, you're gonna have a more successful opportunity at finding fish. All right, so we talked about frequencies, right? And frequency bandwidth. So we've got high, medium, and low. Now, the other side of that is beam widths, is how wide are the beams that are being used by each one of those frequencies that we're transmitting and receiving from in the water. So when we look at something like our high frequency transducers, they have the narrowest beam width. They're concentrating that high frequency into a narrow beam. As we go to medium, they go slightly wider. As they go to low, they're even wider yet. And that energy from that transducer, that frequency energy, is spread out over that beam width. So if you've got frequency bandwidth, each one of those frequencies in the band has a different beam width. So the narrowest beam width is at our highest frequency, and the widest beam width is at our lower frequency. And if we have all of them working together and we're compressing back the energy that comes back from targets and from the bottom into the most defined image that we can get on our fish finder, that's going to be really helpful when we're out fishing. And there are always exceptions. Airmar is the most innovative developer of transducers in the world, and our chirp transducers uh, come in high, medium, and low, and we were asked for a transducer that was a high frequency and wide beam. So we figured out how to do that, to take that high resolution of a high frequency range and deliver a really wide capability, a 25 degree beam width. So we did that in our high wide transducers, which is the perfect tool when you're fishing from the surface down to 500 feet. Tuna, sailfish, anything that's in that upper water column, that's the right tool to use. You combine that with a low frequency element in there in a combination unit, now you have the perfect transducer for whatever fishing you're doing that day. You can find that combination in our B275 low high wide and any of our low high wide options. And the newest exception to the Airmar Chirp transducer line is the medium frequency ultra wide transducers. You'll see that as MW in our product line. And this is an incredibly innovative array of ceramics that actually allows the beam to use medium frequencies, which are typically fairly narrow, and get an up to 73 degree beam width. And what it does is it gives you higher frequencies than the low, which gives you better definition. But it also, because we've altered how it transmits in the water, it gives you amazingly wide uh, coverage under the boat. So if you're looking for deeper species in the water column, let's say 800, 900 feet, and you want wide coverage so you have the most amount of scouting that you can do, the medium wides are going to be the perfect choice for you for that. And you could layer that a medium wide and a high wide so you have the whole water column covered. Or you could do a high if you're going to wreck fish one day, and a medium wide if you're gonna go out deeper looking for species. So if you pay attention to the frequencies and the beam widths and you match them to your fishing, you're gonna have a more successful fishing season.